Today's movie is about this poster. We call it Secrets of Using a Rotovapor Efficiently. It's built out of three parts. The first part is all about really the efficiency. It's five different rules. The second part is how to start the distillation correctly and how to stop it correctly. The last but not least part is about the rotovapor history. It starts in 1957 and goes up to today. And now I will go to more details. The first secret talks about respecting the Delta 20 rule. The Delta 20 rule says that the temperature difference between the vapor temperature and the heating bath temperature as well as the difference between the vapor temperature and the cooling temperature should always be 20 degrees. So, as an example, we start with 50 degrees heating bath temperature, 30 degrees vapor temperature and 10 degrees cooling temperature. The rule of thumb is usually that you try to adjust the vapor temperature to whatever is needed. The second secret talks about optimizing the pressure and there are three things to consider. The first one is you begin slowly. What that means is that you decrease the pressure slowly. The second topic is about choose the working pressure wisely. Usually you just use a solvent list or a solvent table to find the right vacuum. And the third one is to keep the pressure consistent. So things like using the stopcock method results in big jumps of the vacuum. The third secret is about loading the condenser correctly. The correct loading would be about 75% of the condenser. If you have a condenser loader like this, it is overloaded. So then you should increase the pressure, lower the cooling temperature and always respect the Delta 20 rule. If the condenser looks like this, your condenser is underloaded. So then you can decrease the pressure, you can go down in the vacuum, you can increase the heating bath temperature, but again, you have to respect this Delta 20 rule. If it's loaded like this, then you've done everything correctly. The fourth secret is a very important one. It's about rotation speed. It says that you should always set the rotation speed to the maximum. That will increase the efficiency quite dramatically. But there are some cases when you cannot do that. For example, if you have high viscosity samples, or if you have to dry powders. The fifth secret is about using larger evaporating flasks. It's very important that this can impact the performance quite dramatically. You should keep the fill level below one half and you should make sure that the flask is immersed deeply into the heating bath.